Hi guys, this is a video introduction to the Mac operating system for Windows users. Now a lot of my subscribers are using Windows and some of them are interested in buying a Mac and they don't know what the Mac operating system is like. So I'm just going to demonstrate all the features that I've learned in the past three months. Now there isn't going to be any structure to this video, I'm just going to be showing all the different things. If this goes on forever or I make loads of mistakes then I apologise. This is just me rambling all the different things that uh, I've found that OS X does. So let's just get into it. Here is my desktop. Now the first thing I'm going to come to is what people have been asking me from my last video. I can scroll in and out as you can see. I'm using control and then I'm using the scroll wheel on my mouse. Now this is a feature built into the operating system. You can do this on your um, Mac if you have one. Just control and then scroll. Zoom in and out. Very simple, easy to use for tutorials and to show people that are across the room or something. You just go, hey, look, and then you can just zoom in and show it to them. Really, really useful. So at the top, you can see we have the infamous Apple Bar. Woohoo! And if I click the Apple um, icon, you can see we have About This Mac Software Update, Mac OS X or OS X Software, System Preferences, Dock, Recent Items, Force Quit, Sleep, Restart, Shutdown, Logout. Very similar to uh, the Start button or the Start Orb, but without the programs. So that's pretty much that. Now next to it you can see it says Finder. Now when I first started it said ScreenFlow. Now what this actually does is whatever the foreground application is, so for example if I launch up a Firefox window it will say Firefox there. So it is basically whatever is the foreground window and then it will give you an option for the properties or if there's any services that you want to start or link it to and if you want to hide it put it back into the dock or anything like that. So as you can see we've got file, edit, view, go, window, help. Now this would usually be inside of an application on Windows. So if I launch up Firefox it would normally be just under here. It would just have file, edit, blah, blah, blah. But it's really useful having it at the top because it saves screen space. So I think that's really useful. Now over on the right hand side you can see here we've got screen flow. This is mobile me. That's a syncing application to sync stuff to your iPhone and blah blah blah, keep computers in sync with contacts, calendars and all that. Uh, Bluetooth usually comes on a Mac, Wi-Fi usually comes on a Mac, uh, sound, very very simple. Um, battery with the time of the battery that's remaining or charging, this is how long it's going to take my battery to charge. And obviously we have the time and date and here we have Spotlight which is really useful. It searches all your documents and then categorizes them so it tells you documents related to what you've searched, images related to what you've searched and other things but I won't go into that because it's not really that interesting. So let's get into this user interface for the application as you can see different to Windows we have these three green things here now the X button will close it however if I show you I just X out of it obviously it's closed the window if I go down to the dock you'll see there's still a little light there that means it's still running it's still running in the dock so if I click it again obviously it started a new one but it was still running the Firefox process to enable quick launch. Now if you really want to quit it you have to press command and Q and then you'll see the little light down here has gone out and then obviously you can launch a new one and then it'll start bouncing and then launch a new one. So it's really easy if you want to do quick launch you just say oh I want to close it but I'll use it later just click that and obviously it runs a little bit different to Windows than that it won't slow down if you have many many open or if you're worried about keeping it open with processes it works differently and you can have quite a lot open anyway in the newest hardware inside of a Mac. So next thing is the minimize. That will just minimize it to the taskbar. Um, sorry, the taskbar, the dock, and this plus button. Now this works a little bit differently to minimize and maximize. Now obviously we've got the minimize here. When you maximize in Windows, you press it, it goes full screen um, right over where your taskbar is. Now this kind of works similar. If I press it, you can see it's using all available space near the dock. You can see we've also got the uh, wallpaper here, but that it doesn't cover the whole screen like Windows does. You can see there's that gap. It doesn't cover the whole screen. Obviously, you've got that menu at the top, which doesn't disappear. So if you click it again, it will go back to how it was. So obviously, you can move this around, blah, blah, blah. Now, at the bottom, you can see I've got my dock. You can reposition this. I like having this on the left hand side. If I go to position on screen left. I like having it there because then I can see all the applications all the applications are running and if I maximize with Firefox, click it, you can see it uses pretty much all the available vertical space. So it it still has those two gaps but they're minimal on the left hand side. That's why I put it on the left hand side. So that is applications. Now 
if I go to the desktop and show you these icons over here, now you can see I have the Macintosh hard drive, which is the hard disk inside the computer, Firefox, and Verbatim or Verbatim. Now, obviously, we've got the hard drive inside Firefox now, uh, inside the Mac. Now, Firefox. Obviously, I don't have a Firefox drive, and it's not 45.6 megabytes. Now, this is related to downloading software off the internet. If you download something off the internet, I've just downloaded it. You can see here I've got Firefox 3.06.dmg. Now, this is the same as an .exe file in Windows or a setup file for Windows, but it works slightly differently to that. Now, a DMG is pretty much the same as a CD image. Uh, it mounts it, puts it on your desktop because whatever you put in like a CD or if you put in an external drive it will show up on your desktop which is something that Windows doesn't do so it, as you can see we've got Firefox here shown up as a little drive if I double click that you can see it's brought up a new window and it's telling me to drag Firefox into the applications folder now I'll show you how this works I can actually drag this away drag it onto my desktop programs like Firefox work in a very different way it's actually put it over here. where is it put it? It's around here somewhere. There it is. <laughs> so it's over here, Firefox. It hasn't given it an icon yet, but there is Firefox. And I can just launch this. This is a new version of Firefox. It can be launched from anywhere. It doesn't have to go into that applications folder. I could put it into my own folder somewhere. But that's the great thing about it because now it's pretty much installed. So I didn't have to go through that next, 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 choose where to put it, next, next, finish. Like you normally do in Windows, you just get one simple icon and you can put it wherever you want. But it's recommended to put it in applications. And then obviously you can drag it over to the dock, but I've already got it there already, so there's no need to go into that. So what's great about that as well is that having this just this single icon to launch uh, or go into the application is if you want to get rid of it you simply have to drag it to the trash so if I just drag it into the trash it's gone that's it now if I restore it a second put it back onto my desktop for the second now there is actually files inside this, this isn't just one file if I right click and show the package contents you'll see that it has all the files that are inside it. So if I go into contents, you can see it's got Mac OS, plugins, resources, double click, and I've got a bunch of all different files that actually in, are inside it. So it's not technically just one file that's running Firefox, like a single executable on Windows. It's actually got a load of files in it. So have what you will at that. That is uh, installing applications as well. You may find that some are downloaded as zip files. It, they just extract and then they go on your desktop as well, mounted. So that is pretty much that Firefox bit. That went on for quite a while, didn't it? But that's the that's the explaining the Firefox drive. Now here is the verbatim or verbatim. This is a USB drive I have plugged in at the moment. As you can see, it's 120 gig. So I just plug that in, away I go. There's no problems plugging in flash drives, USB drives, or anything like that. Um, they seem to work absolutely fine. So let's go into the finder. Now Finder is pretty much the same thing as my computer. If you can see over the left hand side, again we have those disks. Uh, it says Macintosh HD. iDisk is something to do with mobile me, which I haven't set up yet. Again, verbatim and Firefox. I can eject that Firefox disk that I'm not using anymore. So it will unmount it and then it's gone. Again, I can do that on the USB drive if I want to take it out, put it places or whatever. So that is the devices that are connected. I think you can Get, even get your iPhone in there if you want to to get into the file system but I can't for the life of me remember the name of the application so um, I'm not sure about that one so as you can see over here we have desktop documents downloads games library movies music pictures public and sites this is all under my home folder so home is pretty much where everything is at if I go to the Macintosh hard drive you can see we've got applications library system users but where everything out really is happening at home. So if I go on the desktop, obviously it will show me the icons on the desktop, documents. Now here we have places very similar to Windows Vista where you can drag your favorite places or favorite folders into that area. And that's what I've done because when you first start this, you only get something like desktop, Duncan and applications. I actually just went through and dragged downloads, pictures and all that down here so I get quick access to them so if I want to go to music I get quick access I've got future armor in there for some reason so just easy to quickly get onto it and see where I'm going you can obviously put things in I think you can even download separators I remember seeing a website you can download a separator so if you want to separate things 
um, you can't do this by default, but it basically makes a blank one with a line on it so you can just separate all the different folders you have if you have loads. Now you'll notice that my Firefox here, or just a random icon, is quite small. By default they're quite big. If I go to the uh, settings of the window, I think I need to go to settings there, there we go, settings, and then go to show view options, you can actually change uh, how big the icons are and how far they're spaced apart. I've got mine at 32 by 32 and this is the grid spacing so that's what pushes them together. The text size is 11, label position is bottom. Now you'll notice over here I have the text on the right hand side. You just have to right click the desktop and go to show options and it will do that in the format that I've done it like this which is very similar and also you want to do the show item info that will show you the uh, gigabytes free and how many gigabytes And if you do that inside of the actual folder that you're in it will show you how many um, like if you have a folder full of stuff it will tell you how many items you have in there or if you have a movie it will tell you how long that movie is in just underneath just in blue it's really really useful we also notice I've got a range by name now by default it doesn't it just randomly puts them places it doesn't even put them spaced together if you drag stuff in there or just leave it where it was if you arrange it by name you can have it in like a long um, you can have it like you would in Windows if you arranged it by name and have it in a grid it'll just make it into a grid obviously you can change the background color picture and then what I did was just use the settings that I've got as defaults and now it does it for all the applications so that sort of saves screen space inside of that window now we have different view options you can do this with command 1, 2 three and four. As you can see this is the cover flow very similar to iTunes and that is very useful and also this little button here does the quick view and it will tell you about the application if it's a video it will show it, if it's a PDF it will show you a preview, you can scroll through all the pages you can make it full screen with that button there and really really useful if you don't want to bother with anything you can also use the space bar to do that so, there's so many features that I have to go through which I just can't remember. Um, right, so the next thing I'll do is go into System Preferences. So this is the control panel for OS X. As you can see, we've got it all grouped, personal hardware, internet and network, and system and other. So I'm not going to go through all of them, I'm not going to show you all of them. One of the, Some of the useful ones are expose and spaces. You want to make sure you've activated both of those. If I give you a quick demo of expose, I'll start up Firefox. This is the one that was downloaded from the internet just now. Um, I was telling me I've already got one open. Let's just open the one I have then with Google on it. Uh, Expose. I've actually got a button on my keyboard for this, so I'll press that. Expose brings it out. I know that there is similar freeware for Windows that does this, but um, it's built into Mac, so might as well make use of it. Spaces is also very good. To activate it for me, I have to press F8 and it's using those multiple desktops and as you can see I've got Windows XP over in my next one I'll talk about that in a second, I'll talk about the applications and all different things like that so as you can see you can give yourself many more columns and rows to spaces if you want like eight different ones in one go you're free to do that you can open certain applications in that space so for example I want to run VMware Fusion I might actually do that now, I want to run VMware Fusion in space number two make sure that runs every time I start the computer if I go back to my first space I can press control and left to do that Ooh, no, there we go um, I now every time I open up VMware Fusion it will load up in the second space and switch it's to it 19 hours. it's 19 that's hours that's another thing that Mac does, it will announce the time you can set it to do that it just said it was 19 hours so anyway, um, this is spaces, you can obviously change all the different things that you want to do um, expose a, you can have hot corners, you can uh, ha have things, dashboard, oh that's another thing uh, that's the thing you can configure with expose so um, actually no, I'll show you the dashboard at the end of this so other things you may want to consider looking at is the energy saver, trying to stop it uh, dimming the backlight and things like that, the trackpad, if you first get a MacBook and you are a Windows user, you want to definitely tick those two and tick the secondary click because if you're using the trackpad you can't right click by default, you have to click that secondary click and uh, that's pretty much it for that and uh, I won't go into any of these, I'm sure you guys can go through yourself but the things at the bottom are quite important, there's three different things that I'm using uh, Growl is a notifications system. Now this actually installed itself or asked me to install it when I installed Adium or Adium, which is an instant messaging client for OS X. Now 
Growl, you can customize, really, really customizable. In fact, I'll load it and show you. I've got it to start a login. But if I show you the display options and preview what I have at the moment, you can see it just previews it over here. Uh, preview the smoke display. Now, this doesn't just work for Adium, like popping up all the different things that people are saying. If you go to the applications, you can see it's working for a lot of different things that I have. It does things like show when downloads are completing, or it will show anything really that can show. It will show uh, for various applications that support Growl. So yeah, really, really useful. You can um, change the opacity and all that stuff. I uh, won't go too much into that. Again, you can check that out for yourself. Now the next one is Perian. Perian is pretty much what I consider to be the K-Lite codec equivalent on Windows to Mac. So it will play a bunch of different formats of uh, video for Mac uh, inside QuickTime. So you just launch QuickTime or associate whatever you have with QuickTime and it will load it using Perian. It just works. That's how it works for me. So I'm happy. Now the next one is Secrets. Now I actually learned this on a video from Chris Perillo a very popular dude who does loads of Mac videos and Windows videos. This is a tweak program. It just has a bunch of different things for all your applications and you can just click them and you can see there's a bunch of different things you can alter for them that may make your usability better, more functionality or even speed up your system which is the thing I learned it from. A couple of options to speed up your system. Inside system you just go quartz to extreme enabled, click that and then beam sync as disabled Apparently it sped up the system, I haven't really noticed it to be honest, but whatever. So that was the system preferences. Now I promised that I would show you the dashboard. Now imagine Yahoo widgets on a Windows computer with all those different widgets on your page. Press F8 and out come those, out come those widgets. If you don't have them on your desktop, you can have it so it brings them all to the screen. Now it works the same inside I was 10. You can see I press mine and I have a bunch of different widgets. On the top right hand side I have weather, I have a currency converter, this is actually a measurement converter but it also has currency there so I've been using it to convert US dollars to pounds to buy some stuff. Um, on the left hand side I have the uh, calendar, bottom right hand side I have a calculator and I have a couple of times that I need to know if I'm making videos to see what times people are going to see the videos so I want to see what the time is in America so I know when to start posting the video so I get to know when people are viewing it and then whatever and I also have a little stickies bit which is also a part of OS X, I'll go into some of the applications in a minute but this is just a quick thing if I want to quickly make a note about something I'll just press F4 on my keyboard which is a designated key not designated it's, it's got that key assigned to dashboard by OS X and I can just press that one key start typing and then it's saved really really useful so that is uh, the dashboard so if I close this out now I'm just gonna go through the applications now if I quickly actually I'll go over the dock so here are the things I have in my dock I have Finder, Firefox Thunderbird, now Thunderbird works over in Mac, a lot of applications work in the Mac operating system, things like FileZilla, now I'm not sure if Pigeon does, but a lot of the popular ones that are freeware or open source, uh, there are a lot of ports for the Mac, so you'll find a lot of the freeware applications that I've shown may even work on the Mac. Not a lot, not all of them, sorry, do, but quite a few of them do. iTunes is on there by default. ADM, as I said, great instant messaging client. It's very customizable. Um, it does Facebook, um, MySpace, I think it does. Uh, a bunch of different ones, very similar to Pigeon uh, for Windows. And system preferences. VMware Fusion is a fantastic application. I use it to virtualize my XP. I don't know if I've shown that to you. I think I did on my last video. If I just use spaces to go across. You can see that it suddenly entered standby. So I'm going to quickly move the mouse to load it up again. And here I have Windows Live Messenger. But here is my Windows system. I can use it. It's very usable since I upgraded my MacBook Pro here to 4 gigs of RAM. Um, I can also use. Uh, Vista on this as well and probably use that in another spaces box but as you notice it gets rid of the finder if I drag it over the top it will show me the finder I can use it in unity mode which puts all the applications inside of OS 10 but I just use it in a separate thing so I can just quickly switch across I usually always have it running as well quickly switch across do whatever I want to on Windows and then switch back to um, OS 10 again I can use that spaces as well if I go to F8 I can switch across with that um, obviously you can do a load more things with VMware Fusion but that's mostly what I use it for at the moment anyway. So that is VMware Fusion. 
Next one is Cabos, I've done a video on that previously. Screen flow is what I'm using to record this right now, that has all the fancy effects. After I finish this screen recording, it comes up with an editor, and I can then put a load of different things in, like have me zooming out on a screen, moving the position, moving the um, angle of the, the screencast and my face. I don't know if you've seen that on some of my videos, I sort of have me here and the screen here, so you can sort of see both at the same time, but it's really easy to use. Uh, World of Warcraft, I play this a lot, I am a World of Warcraft junkie and I'm ashamed of it, I don't really play that much but I've had very many sleepless nights over this game so yeah. And uh, what you'll notice is that I also have applications. Now over here if you haven't seen Mac before um, you'll notice that you get the, the opportunity to put folders into your dock and what it will do, if I just click games, and you can see I've got Bejeweled installed on here, it will pop pop them out. Now normally it pops them out as a stack if you have less than six items or something, but you can right click and you can say uh, display as folder first because I always like seeing um, the actual folder images, as you can see I've got downloads, documents and applications and they're showing you the, the actual images, but if you have the stack displaying as a stack, it shows you like tiny previews, but really confuses me. So I prefer to just have the display as the folder icon, the folder icon. But what I've done is also done view content as grid because I don't like it in list and I don't like it in stack. So all of my ones open up as a grid. So that is the grid layout. Usually it springs out a lot further. And if I show you applications, as you can see, it's sprung out a hell of a lot further. So I always have them all opening in grid. Maybe useful if you want to use it. Also down here you have the running application similar to the start or taskbar on Windows. So obviously I can just go boink and then boink and it goes back down there. So uh, next thing I shall show you is applications, recommended applications. Now I haven't got a few installed which I'll want to talk about quickly. First one is a program called the Unarchiver. That's a really useful application if you want to unzip, unra. It's very similar to 7-zip, but I struggled to get 7-zip for Mac, so I'm just using the unarchiver. Uh, just get that, and it will just, you can even get it to delete. It's really, really useful. It will, what it will do is it will extract what you've downloaded into a folder. It will then delete that original file and then show you the extracted folder, which is exactly what you'd normally do on Windows. You'd, uh, go to 7-zip, extract files, you then forget about the fact that you've already got that zip file there and you'd be in that folder doing all your stuff and then you get a load of different zip files on your desktop. So that's really, really useful. That is uh, the unarchiver. Now another one, I'm not sure I can remember. I'll just go through them anyway. These are all the ones that I have at the moment. And if I just go, uh, address book is included with uh, OS 10. It's really useful. I sync it with my iPhone so it keeps my contacts. Uh, Automator I haven't used yet. Uh, you can get it to link programs and do tasks. Cabos done a video on LimeWire alternative. Uh, calculator obviously chess obviously. Colloquy is an IRC client free to download. Very very nice. If you've seen Perillo's videos, you'll notice he has it running. Um, it's really visually it's really quite nice. Uh, Cyberduck is an FTP client. You can also use it to SSH into an iPhone to make it jailbroken. Uh, dashboard obviously is a dashboard I'll show you. Dictionary, it's got built-in dictionary into OS 10. If I quickly launch this and show you, you can actually have it search Wikipedia and it just tells you, yeah, it's going to use the internet. And then if I search, I don't know, uh, rubbish, it gives me instantly all the different things for rubbish. If I click it, it will tell me the Wikipedia entry and all the pictures associated. Really, really useful. You can even have a widget load in your dashboard where you can type it in and it will bring it up as well. But I don't think that searches Wikipedia. Now, oh, one thing I'd like to show you, uh, I'll show you that in a minute, <laughs> sorry. Right, next thing is DVD player, works really well. As far as I know, I think Windows Media Player does it for Windows. Expose, I've shown you. Firefox, I've shown you. Fontbook, I haven't used. Front Row, similar to Media Center for Windows. Uh, GarageBand, I've got, I've got iPhone 9, which is really cool. Uh, apparently, you can learn instruments in GarageBand or create podcasts, things like that. I'd suggest you watch another video on iPhone 9 to see all the great features it's got, or even go onto the Apple website to see it. So, Google Earth, and obviously, you've probably got that on Windows, you've seen it. Works really nice on the Mac as well, especially if you've got a dedicated card like the, uh, the MacBook Pro has. Uh, iCal, useful calendar, works the same as Windows Calendar iChat, now iChat is a little bit strange, it, it works with I think it's AIM 
and Jabber or something like that. So you can't connect to MSN. I think some people have done some cruddy workarounds, but you can't connect to MSN, which is the reason why I'm using Adium. Now, if you're interested in doing webcam chats, you know, I don't know what you guys do on webcam, but uh, if you're interested in doing webcam chats to other people, um, then you may struggle to try and do that uh, in Windows Live Messenger. I had that problem. I'm actually using Windows Live Messenger on Windows. You probably saw me show that earlier. That is because I want to do like webcam chats with family and uh, I want to be able to do that, but I have to do it through Windows. You can connect uh, or sort of link the webcam, as you can see, I'm using the webcam now in um, the Mac. You can connect that with VMware Fusion and so it will connect into that and then it will show you the webcam inside of Windows Live Messenger. But anyway, I digress again. So, uh, DVD player expose, yes, 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 uh, iChat, iDVD creates DVDs, it's a useful burning application, image capture is useful if you plug in digital cameras or iPhones, it will ask you what do you want to do with all your photos on here, it will say do you want to put it in your pictures folder, do that, click it, bam, it's all in your pictures folder. Uh, iMovie is what I've sometimes used to make videos, I should do that sometimes when I, it, 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 iMovie 09 is really good because you can add special effects, text effects um, to make your videos look more professional. I've done that on a video I made a while ago. Insomnia RX I've talked about before, keeps your computer awake, really useful. iPhoto, I really like this application. What it will do is it's got something called faces and something called places. Now I won't show you all my photos because obviously they're all personal. So faces and places quickly. Faces analyzes your pictures for certain people's faces and it will tell you are these people in these photos? And then you click yes, 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 yes. And it groups them all, puts it on a like a like a board, and then says Adam, uh, Christopher. Peter or something like that. Click on them and that's all the photos that have their faces. Uh, it also has places and it takes the GPS coordinates from an iPhone 3G or ones that any uh, GPS enabled camera and it will place where you've been on the map. Really useful as well. So those are two really cool features and also does upload to Facebook and things like that. Uh, iSync, I actually use that to sync with my Sony Ericsson KW... G S T no my W five eighty I I use that to sync with that and also you can get it to run it as a modem I was using that a long time ago back in the GPRS days of not having an iPhone um, I used it through iSync uh, iTunes obviously music player iWeb creates cruddy websites which are HTML and look horrible um, mail is a it's all right but I've tried to get it downloading um, working with IMAP. Only it started downloading them all and it took ages and it kept repeating itself. Got really annoyed with it so I just switched over to Thunderbird. But if you use an iPhone and you want to sync them then you may want to do that. Uh, Miro is recently updated. It's a video player. It downloads uh, videos from RSS feeds and you get the choice of keeping them or deleting them after you watch them. So that's really useful. Click a button, deletes that video, you don't have to watch it again or you can keep it, it will save into videos. So that's useful for websites, you can do it for YouTube videos, but I just tend to go on the YouTube website to save me all the bandwidth of downloading all these videos, um, but it may be useful to download single videos as well. Photo Booth, had a lot of fun with Photo Booth, I put some pictures up on Facebook of me and some, my girlfriend's family um, just pissing about on it and we just made it as a wallpaper in PC World, I remember doing that. Uh, preview. You'll probably find that in your in your um, dock by default, it just previews your stuff, basically. I don't really need to tell you what that does. Quick time player, you're more than likely you know. Safari, web browser, ScreenFlow I've talked about. Skype, Skype is so much better on Mac than it is on Windows. The, the interface is so much more simpler. Just gives you a long list of contacts, your balance, and that's pretty much it. And then, yeah. Uh, spaces, I've talked about stickies, I've shown you the sticky widget, works the same way, you can just have a load on your desktop if you want. Preferences I've gone into, text edit is the same as notepad or wordpad for Windows, uh, Thunderbird, mail client, time machine is that thing where it backs up your stuff to external drives, or the time capsule allows you to go back in time, select a document, bring it back and then it's restored. Uh, Toast Titanium, you have to pay for this unfortunately. This allows you to burn DVDs, uh, sort out ISOs, convert them to DMGs if you need to, uh, make video DVDs, uh, does a bunch of different things, audio CDs, all that stuff is really, really useful. Uh, Tubal is something that doesn't really work anymore for some reason. Uh, they might, might fix it soon, but 
it allows you to download YouTube videos, single YouTube videos, and then puts them straight into iTunes, which is exactly what I want to do because then I can take it on the go with my iPod, so or my iPhone 3G, and it just puts them straight in, downloads. You can also select them or search inside the client without going to YouTube and getting the URL. So that's really useful too. Uh, Transmission is a torrent client. Uh, for those of you who use BitTorrent, I use it as well. Transmission is my equivalent. And uh, Utilities has a bunch of Mac utilities inside. Uh, disk utility may be useful if you're formatting drives or partitioning. Uh, Bluetooth file exchange does what it says. Airport utility might be useful for your Wi-Fi. Uh, Boot camp is for putting Windows on your Mac. Now, that's one thing I didn't mention about um, VMware Fusion. Now, this Windows installation I have right here is actually a boot camp partition on my hard drive. So you'll notice that although I have a 250 gig hard drive here, um, in this laptop, I only have 171 showing inside Mac. That's because I've dedicated 60 to my Windows partition, and then that is actually running inside of VMware Fusion. So I've got the choice of virtualizing this partition, showing you Windows, and like I'm doing now, or I can reboot into Windows, and it will show exactly the same interface. Obviously, loading all the Apple drivers as well. So if I was to put Vista in this, it will in virtualization, it won't show error. Reboot, go into it, and it will show error because it's using native hardware. Oh, right, uh, next uh, console I won't go into, Java I won't go into, Terminal, it's not really bothering about Terminal at the moment, I've not really had to use it for any any purpose, podcast to capture. Um, capture. Um, now one thing I've also uh, noticed is applications do freeze on OS X, no matter what people tell you that their Mac hasn't crashed, I've had many crashes on mine from various pieces of software. And to quit an application, you have to go to the Apple, and then go to Force Quit. And then it'll show you the bunch of things that you have. Very similar to Alt, Control, Delete. It'll tell you all the things that you have open, and then it'll try and Force Quit it. Now, I've noticed when I'm rebooting, it takes some time to reboot, which really annoys me because it's closing all the applications. Windows, for some reason, does that so much quicker because this doesn't Force Quit them. It just tries to close them, as far as I know, anyway. Now, what I've noticed is that I've even tried to shut the computer down. I'll close the laptop lid, and it's actually put it to sleep before I shut it down so I end up opening the laptop and then it shuts down so that is one annoyance with this and did I show you something else as well another annoyance I've had if I go into for example if I go into the uh, home folder inside OS 10 you notice I've got the documents folder you can't actually cut things inside of OS 10 for some reason if I want to cut things now C uh, copying, cutting and pasting is very similar to Windows. Windows you press Control c Control v Control x In uh, um, Mac you press Command-C, Command-X, Command-V. Um, but Command-X doesn't seem to work. It won't let me cut this icon. Normally it would go uh, it would go sort of shaded, wouldn't it, on Windows. And then I could paste it somewhere. But as it doesn't cut, then you have no option. Uh, but what you have to do is basically open up the destination folder and then drag it in. I'm not sure why they do that, but it is like that anyway. So I was going into the applications, wasn't I? And the utilities, where was I? Uh, so another thing, useful is System Profiler. If you go into the power options, you'll find that it tells you all about your battery, hell of a lot of stuff. It says my cycles is nine, so I haven't obviously used it, this that much. All the sleep settings, useful for finding out out about stuff on about your computer. Uh, another thing is activity monitor, uh, very similar again to uh, the Alt Control Delete or Task Manager inside of Windows, and it will just show you probably much more than you'd see inside when the Windows Activity Monitor. It shows you all the read speeds and write speeds if you drive and all the things that are open at the moment. Um, so that's pretty much it. Now another thing I haven't shown you about the interface is this button over here. If I click it, it gets rid of the toolbar, any toolbars that are available. It gives you a nice big window to work with, which is maybe useful if you're using Firefox or anything like that. Apparently, if you shift click it, you can alter some things as well. Was it control click? Or is it control click? No? Command click, alt click? There we go, command click. Sorry, I'm just doing this on the fly. If you press command click, it will do a bunch of different things to the toolbar. If you want to make it look different, so if you want it just text only, have it like that. Sorry about that, I was just trying to figure it out. Anyway, let's go back into it. So that is pretty much it. That's the activity monitor, which shows you the same things. And uh, that's pretty much it. I, I've pretty much gone over everything I want to go over. 
Um, so thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, leave a video response. I'll tell you as much as I can about what I've learned so far. Um, some of the recommended applications are Quicksilver, which is a, a launching application, um, and I can't remember some other ones. You just have to let me know if you know of any, and I'll install them and I'll try them out and show people. So thanks for watching my video. Please comment, rate, subscribe if you like my videos, and thanks again.